Hello and welcome to the latest video in the ACI bite size series. The bite size video is meant to be small chunks of tasty ACI morsels, easily consumable and digestible, uh, which basically just show a single uh, configuration element of a ACI fabric. So in this video we're going to be creating an L2L or an external bridge domain. Okay, so there's our topology. So we're going to be concentrating on this section up in the top right, uh, basically extending some uh, bridge domains that we've already created in our previous videos out into the legacy world. Okay, so that's where we are at the moment. So the policy in force within the fabric is pretty much what that below uh, graphic looks like. So we've got our application profile already configured, our endpoint groups, and our bridge domains. Um, if you want to see how those are configured, uh, just refer to the previous bite size video of configuring and integrating Cisco UCS. So the object of this video is to extend those bridge domains out into the legacy world. Um, numerous reasons for doing that. Um, most commonly uh, would be for a migration from a legacy network into an ACI fabric or there may just be a requirement to extend layer 2 outside of the fabric for whatever reason. Okay, so the what success will look like on this video is I've actually got a couple of SVIs configured on an external router um, in our legacy environment so the object of the exercise will be to ping through to those IP addresses from within endpoints within our EPGs within our ACI bridge domain. Uh, so for example from our web tier which is in bridge domain VLAN 10 we want to ping through to our SVI on VLAN 10 in our legacy world. So physically I've got a, a Cisco 3650 uh, router connected via a single link, uh, one gig link into the uh, node 2 on port 23 um, generally in the real world you'd probably have that dual connected via a VPC uh, just for a bit of added resilience. Okay and that's how it would look like from a logical point of view. So our two bridge domains are the sort of the pinky boxes down there and we're going to extend those bridge domains into the legacy environment. Uh, VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 respectively. Now there's two ways of doing an L2L. You can either extend the EPG um, and again if we, if you want to have a look at how that's done it's a very similar process to basically uh, configuring an EPG on a particular port. For, it's very similar to how a bare metal server um, is integrated into the fabric. Or the other way is to extend the bridge domain. Um, so the main difference being is, you're again remembering our ACI 101, um, elements within an EPG by default can talk requiring no contract. Um, you can turn that off but by default they will talk without a contract. So if you have any requirement to control the traffic between your um, ACI environment and your legacy environment, which I guess you know the majority of customers would, um, in that case you would want to create an external EPG um, which means that you can actually have a contract between the two so a contract between your internal EPG and your external EPG and so that's the method we'll use here extending out the bridge domain okay so let's get on with the configuration so let's get a ping going to our SVIs so this is my external switch, so do I show IP int brief, you'll see I've got two SVIs created VLAN 10 and VLAN 20, both of which end in 200 and if I have a look at the interface that connects into the uh, node 2 of the fabric Okay, so it's pretty simple. It's just um, a tagged dot one q trunk link carrying both VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. 
okay so first thing we need to do is set up the connection into the legacy switch from the fabric so again looking at our diagram it's port 23 on node 2 so we're pretty familiar how to do this by now let's go into our fabric and again we'll use the wizard so this is not a VPC it's a single connection so at the moment the only switch policies we've got are um, applied to two switches so we need to add an additional switch policy which is only for node 102 okay So yeah, just node 102 and let's add an interface to that. So it's an individual link, not a VPC this time, and it is on port 1 slash 23. We'll give it a, a sensible name like legacy switch. So again, this would probably more commonly represent a, a Nexus or a you know, catalyst switch outside of the ACI environment. OK, we want to create a link level policy. As I mentioned, this is only a, a 1 gig link. So we want to create a 1 gig policy. Put a nice capital G there. And speed to 1 gig. OK, we'll disable CDP and enable LLDP anything else we need there okay so again using, using the wizard we can actually carry on this configuration so it is actually a external bridged device that we are adding in which is the other name for it, L2 out and we're going to create a domain called legacy networks domain and the two VLANs that we're going to trunk outside of the environment are 10 and 20 okay save and submit okay so that's the physical side done for the infrastructure OK, so let's now go and do the logical side. In fact, just before we do this, this is always interesting, let's kick off a couple of pings. So this is from our web tier in the 10 bridge domain. So let's kick off a continuous ping to the SVI in the legacy environment. And we'll do the same for the app tier. So this is in the bridge domain of uh, the 20 subnet. So the object of the exercise is to get those pings responding. OK. OK, so let's go back to our tenant. And our SDN lab tenant. Let's have a look how our application is doing. OK, so we've got our web and app tiers. So the object now is to extend those out into the legacy network. So in order to do that, we go into our networking tab external bridged networks and we want to create a bridged outside so we'll call this VLAN 10 we're going to associate that with the legacy networks domain and we're going to associate it with our internal VLAN 10 bridge domain and we need to use the same encapsulation that the legacy switch is expecting so we'll tell that VLAN 10 and our port which we created with a little wizard is on port 23 of node 2 so I'm going to click add there okay that all looks good okay so Obviously we need to associate a contract with an LPG, so in this case we need to create an external representation of that network. So we just need to give it a name and we'll call it 
external VLAN 10. Okay, that's all we need there. Okay, finish. So there's our VLAN 10 external bridge domain with our external VLAN 10 network, our external EPG. So let's do the same for VLAN 20. So call this VLAN 20. External bridge domain is the same one, Legacy Networks domain. Our internal bridge domain will now be our VLAN 20 bridge domain. And again the encapsulation has to match the tagging on the external layer 2 switch. So that will be 20. Again it's a single port. And again it's the same port, node 2, port 23. Again add that. Next, and again we'll create our external EPG to represent the network, and we'll call it external VLAN 20. Okay. Okay, so we have both of those in. Okay, so the next thing to do is to create our contracts between our external EPG and our internal EPGs. So between our web and our external VLAN 10 and vice versa with VLAN 20. So let's go and do that. So let's give a provided contract on all of these external EPGs. So contracts, let's add a provided contract. Again, just for ease we'll use that permit any, but again you could create as, as granular um, contracts or ACLs as, as you needed to. And we'll update that. Again we'll create a provided contract on our external VLAN 20 EPG. Okay, so now let's just confirm that we have a consumed contract on both of our EPGs within our application. So our, our web tier. Okay, we have a provided contract but not a consumed contract. So obviously we need to marry that those contracts up so let's provide a consumed contract and we'll just use the permit any and let's just double check our application EPG the contracts and we already have a consumed contract there so let's have a look at our application now ah so you can see now we have a couple of L2 outs so let's check our pings. Ah, okay, so we can now ping through to our SVI on both VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. So let's also pop back to our external switch and just make sure we can ping inside the fabric. So let's try and ping our bridge domain or default gateway within the fabric. Okay, let's ping a couple of workloads, our web VMs and similarly our VLAN 20. There's our bridge domain gateway within the fabric. and one of our VMs. Um, obviously if you had your um, default gateway outside of the ACI fabric um, which is you know, more than feasible and again that may be for a, a temporary migration 
uh, measure or it could be you know, you've got an external firewall providing your default gateway um, that's when you would need to change the behavior of the bridge domain so let's have a quick look where we'll do that so if we go into our bridge domains let's go into our networking yeah so by default there the bridge domain is set to hardware proxy which basically means that if the leafs don't know a destination it will just send it to the spines now obviously if the destination is outside of the fabric that, that those ARPs or that, that traffic um, is not going to get to its destination so if, you, if you're using a gateway um, outside of the fabric or extending your layer 2 outside of the fabric um, you need to just send that to flood okay so I think that about concludes this video hope you can join me for the next bite-sized video um, so in the meantime take care